What is going on guys, Rewinds here, and in this video I'm going to be bringing you guys some more spoilers for Boruto Manga Chapter 75. So technically this is going to be my full spoilers video, but we don't have the traditional full spoilers that I would normally have for one of these videos. Normally I would be covering the full um, dialogue lines and everything for the full spoilers video, but we don't have that this month unfortunately. However, we do have a lot of big um, tidbits of what's going to be happening throughout the chapter. So I am going to be covering that as part of this full spoiler video. And if you are interested in seeing some of the panels and some of the other reveals, I recommend checking out my previous video that I uploaded before this. Um, but uh, yeah, let's jump into it. Um, I'm pretty excited to see what else is revealed. I've seen some of the things here and there. But um, I haven't seen all of it, so I'm going to read it for you guys and react to it as I go as well. So um, I do want to just mention this earlier stuff. This was in my last video, but I want to say it again just so we have the full spoilers in this video. Um, but it says, Amado wishes Kawaki to embed a karma onto a new clone, which will allow Amado to transfer her daughter's memories and consciousness. Amado says that karma is like a divine power, and he still hasn't given up on his daughter. That's what he needs Kawaki for. So that makes sense, you know, for why he cares so much about Kawaki in the sense that he wants him to be alive and around. So if you guys don't know, pretty much Amado had a daughter that looked like Delta that got this disease that was um, uncurable, especially during... Uh, the, that time period so Amado is doing everything he can to bring her back uh, by transferring her memories and everything to a clone's body next part Amado tells everyone about the death of his daughter but Shikamaru requests Ida to look into the past and confirm the events Naruto and Boruto both think it's going a bit too far turns out it's all true Shikamaru says I'm just doing my job very in character of Shikamaru, just keeping up what we've been seeing pretty much throughout Boruto and even Naruto uh, with this character. So um, that's pretty consistent there. So as for newer spoilers, um, so first thing over here. So pretty much Abdul Zoldik said that this chapter is very um, text heavy and reveals so much information. So it says that uh, he doesn't want to rush and provide misinformation. So, uh, pretty much what ended up happening is, I'm going to go up here really, really quick. We do have a lot to talk about. Where is it? So, the very last thing he said was that that's it from him and that there are still things that he and Luana thought would be best to leave out. So, all of us have something to look forward to on Sunday. Um, and pretty much he shouted her out for translating and all that. So, shout out to her. But I believe I read that um, there's still a solid 30% of the chapters worth of content for us to find out on our own. So, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. But alright, let's move on to this. So, Amado describes Shibai's Otsutsuki abilities as divine arts and different to ninjutsu or senjutsu. Not only skills of Ida, but Code's claw marks are also a Shinjutsu, or a Divine Jutsu. That's what else the other term that's being used for this. Um, Kawaki's Sukuna Hikona and Daikoku Ten abilities as well also fall underneath this Shinjutsu. And down here it says, by referring to Ida code and kawaki's inherited and implanted abilities amado says that unlike ninjutsu or senjutsu you don't need to use hand signs to activate these abilities which is what makes them a divine ability that that logic makes sense so it seems like we have a new sort of jutsu now and um the explanation for it makes sense um i definitely don't mind it i just gotta see the full chapter and see how everything's explained but uh, I definitely don't have a problem with it as of right now. Next spoilers. And oh, by the way, if you don't know who Shibai is, that's the other Otsutsuki that Amado is talking about now. And he apparently revealed a lot 
about this Otsutsuki. I did have a panel um, showing this Otsutsuki in my last video, so if you want to see that, check that out. Um, Amuro describes some of Shibai Otsutsuki's abilities, such as they say that when he swung his arm, he created a windstorm. And when he let out a scream, he created a thunderstorm as if it were lightning. Amado says, frightening abilities. Honestly, this is pretty crazy stuff, guys. It's The power scaling is really moving up in this Naruto-verse now. It really feels like it. Um, I don't personally mind that. I just hope that some of our older characters we love and the door also stay relevant because they are, especially if this Otsutsuki comes back at some time, um, it's definitely going to be uh, troubling to get through, I feel, for for the cast. Uh, okay. Amino describes the death of his daughter and still wishes to revive her using this divine power that Kawaki inherited from Ishiki Otsutsuki. Delta is now confirmed to look like Amado's daughter, but the clone Delta was different to his daughter. And now, here's this bigger explanation. Amado's daughter had an incurable disease. It says there was literally no cure, and it is not known why she got this disease. There was just no treatment. The doctors abandoned her because it was a case with no solution, no way out, a lost case. Amado says that instead of finding or inventing some treatment that would cure it, he, prepared, he preferred to continue with the research to create a clone since he had much more knowledge about it, so he decided to go in that area. His daughter died during this process, and after nine months and with some ease, he managed to create an equal body, but later he realized that this clone was not like his daughter since the daughter had another personality. That was the moment that he realized that his daughter no longer existed. So it kind of feels like Amado's a bit of a desperate man right now trying to get um, his daughter back. At least that's what it seems like he's telling them. We don't know how much he truly cares about this being his objective. And we also got to know Amado's a pretty suspicious character, I guess you could say. So maybe he could have some ulterior agenda still aside from this too. But maybe this could really be one of his main goals or maybe it is his main goal. Um, I personally would like to see it, all this stuff with the panels, you know, so we have an idea of, um, how he's talking and, uh, if it seems believable or not, you know, when you see those panel images as well. So Momoshiki and Boruto share dialogue with each other, in which Boruto asks Momoshiki about Shibai in Divine Power, to which Momoshiki says it's true. But Momoshiki finds it suspicious that Ida's love ability is Shinjutsu. And then we have a lot of explanations here. As Boruto listens to Amado, time stops once again for Boruto. He is now able to listen to Momoshiki's thoughts and via versa, it's literally like they're one. What Boruto thinks Momoshiki hears. This is because Momoshiki believes in... That story, we already know about the otsutsuki fication data, transfer from Boruto's death. So nothing new, but here we go with the most crazy part. Regarding Shibai Otsutsuki, he doesn't say anything important about him, but he claims that everything Amado said is true on the issue of Shinjutsu. So more confirmation from Momoshiki. Um, always cool to see Momoshiki around. Um... And uh, the fact that it's confirmed to be true just shows that Amado is not lying this time around, or not necessarily hiding much here. In exception of one thing, at the same time, Momoshiki thinks something doesn't make sense. So, Ida has the ability to clairvoyance the Senrigan to see the past and present, and the ability to make everyone fall in love with her. But for Momoshiki, there is something strange about this love ability of Ida's, because... Senrigan really is a Shinjutsu ability, but the part of making everyone fall in love is not something he knows. It's not an ability that he's aware of. Still, about that part of him finding it strange, in my interpretation, it is as if he believes he has heard all the Jutsus in the world, except for this one in particular. So Momoshiki probably has a wide range of knowledge on this, but 
he doesn't seem to know this one. So this love ability is unique and not one of these divine jutsu. Momoshiki also says that he is a little uncomfortable um, or strange. Why Amado talks as if Ida's power was a shinjutsu ability when in fact it is not. So Momoshiki thinks that there's a possibility of Amado lying about this specific matter or at least hiding something. Which is exactly what I said you know, about a few minutes ago when I was reading a different part. Amado is still a suspicious character. He may be leaving things out. Definitely wouldn't be surprising to me. Although he is revealing a lot of things here too now. But what could he be leaving out? If you have any guesses, let me know in the comments below. But let's move on up here. So, Momoshiki mentions something along the lines of Boruto's thoughts getting corrupted with Momoshiki's new data, which is how they were able to talk. Momoshiki doesn't know how to fix this, but because of this glitch, Boruto saw what he wasn't meant to see. And this is hinting at the future. I'm pretty sure at least because we do have a panel that showed some future things. So to my understanding, this new data Momoshiki mentions is when he resurrected Boruto from the dead, which made his link with Boruto even stronger, which caused this cross thought glitch. And pretty much he says it's funny because Momoshiki warns Boruto not to let Kawaki sense it as if Kawaki will attack. So, oh yeah, um, I guess it would be because Momoshiki did technically face off against Kawaki in that battle where Kawaki killed Boruto. Another little detail here, um, this is from the translator. You guys are so concerned about the god, so let's say what really happened. Amado says, don't worry, he is no longer in this world. All we have is Shibai's body. So this is also really, really interesting. How does he have Shibai's body? How did Shibai die? More questions to be answered. Unless, you know, I scroll up and um, it's mentioned already. But that's more things for sure that we need explanations on at some point. So um, this seems like the last part. So Amado believes... That Shibai Otsutsuki conquered death by repeatedly reincarnating using karma and eating chakra fruits. And continued like this for thousands of years until he became a god. Amado's hypothesis is that Shibai deliberately abandoned his body. So, okay, that answers the question. Um, but he abandoned his body, so does that mean he's still alive? Amado also believes that it's, still, that it's possible that someone could have killed Shibai. But since Amino doesn't know the truth of what happened to Shibai, his hypothesis is that Shibai deliberately abandoned his body. So um, that also gives us a little bit more context on that. I kind of hope that they go over how he died in this chapter sometime soon because, I mean, technically Ida could use her ability to look back at this, right? And find out how Shibai did die or what really happened to him. Um, it'd be kind of dumb if they didn't use that ability for that, if they really wanted to know what happened. But, um, it seems like the direction this chapter is heading in is revealing a lot of new information to the story, which is something I really, really like. And I'm just excited to see what else they have to reveal because I'm pretty sure I did read on the translator, uh, Luana's account as well that they only revealed i think 60 percent or maybe 70 percent of the information of what happened in the chapter so that leaves a solid 30 to 40 percent for us readers to find out on sunday the 20th when the full chapter drops so i'm just wondering now if this otsutsuki god at some point is going to come back into this story be involved at some point i know it's definitely going to be a plot point that is mentioned at times but this chapter seems to have a lot to offer, a lot of questions, like I said, a lot of new information being revealed. So um, I'm excited to see what direction they head with all of this stuff. Hopefully the art looks good. I mean, I know there's not going to be any action or anything in this chapter based off how it's sounding. But hopefully everything looks pretty solid. Hopefully everything's explained pretty well. And um, hopefully most of us enjoy it. But um, I am expecting... 
Oh, another big thing I want to talk about real quick. Uh, if you guys haven't seen, I'm going to just drop this here in this video as well. This part right here, Boruto gets a glimpse into the future. This is the Sage Mode Mitsuki thing in the future. I actually didn't catch this in my first video, but apparently this isn't a one-on-one -on -one of Mitsuki versus Kawaki uh, post time skip. This is actually um, Mitsuki. I, I think not Mitsuki. This is uh, a five-on-one fight of Team Inoshikacho, Mitsuki, as well as Sarada fighting Kawaki. And maybe it's not even post time skip because uh, I mean you're seeing everybody else looks younger, but Kawaki. I mean Mitsuki. I mean since he's using Sage Mode, I guess some people are assuming that he is older there. But maybe they're still all uh, doing this pre time skip, and this is something to come by soon as well. Who knows when? But um, if that stuff to come, to, if that stuff is going to be coming by soon, it's going to be pretty exciting. I bet. Let me know what you think of that glimpse into the future as well. But uh, that should wrap up pretty much all the spoilers we're going to get for chapter seventy five. Let me know what you thought of all of that in the comments below. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. Hope you guys have a good day or night whenever you guys are watching this video. I'm Rewinds, and I'm out.